This is Doug DeMuro, and today I am going to address a big question I am getting from a lot of people and seeing all over the internet and everywhere. Are we in a car bubble in terms of pricing, in terms of car values? The current situation with car prices, is this a bubble? And, you know, can you address dealership markups? They kind of go hand in hand. Basically, what, what is the deal with the current state of pricing in the entire car industry? So, it's a great question. It's on everybody's minds. Let's get into it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your cool car and auction it for free on Cars and Bids. And we've had some fantastic sales recently, including this Shelby GT350 track car, which brought just under $70,000. This Porsche 911 997 model brought just over $42,000. And this wonderful 100 series Toyota Land Cruiser sold for just under $28,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, check out Cars and Bids with daily auctions and great selection at carsandbids.com. Okay, so let's talk bubble. Uh, first, the little background here, why are people saying that we are in a bubble? This is, this is actually an obvious answer to pretty much anyone who's looked at any car dealership lot these days. They are basically empty, and the few cars that they still have remaining in any capacity are marked way, way, way up. Uh, stuff that was undesirable even just a couple of years ago, cars that nobody really wanted, are now you're lucky to get one at the sticker price if it isn't even marked up a little bit. Basically, everything is going crazy. There are no cars available. Everything's really expensive. Everything is selling with the exception of the Aston Martin DBX. So why is this happening right now? There are several different explanations that have all kind of collided into a perfect storm of this current car market. The computer chip shortage is one. Cars are still suffering from this chip shortage where it's difficult for them to get computer chips and thus manufacture a lot of the technology that's in cars. Screens, key fobs, heated seats, all of that stuff is a challenge. And that has been a challenge for automakers and they can't build the cars without these computer chips and it is still slow to be resolved. And so that's been a problem with supply. And that has been coupled with a general logistics kind of slowdown and halt all throughout the world right now. Supply chains and shipping have been a problem just generally globally, and particularly here in North America, where goods just haven't been as easy to get at the current moment for various reasons, in part still having to do with COVID uh, in, a, in a large part. And so supply chains logistics are still a challenge. Now, those are the obvious reasons why the car market is so crazy right now, but there's still some other things that are putting so much pressure on the market. One is the fact that demand has been incredibly high. Beginning just a little bit after COVID started a couple of years ago, demand has absolutely skyrocketed through the roof, in part because of low interest rates. Uh, the, the government cut rates, and so rates were low, borrowing was cheap, and a lot of people went out and bought cars. And I don't want to get especially political here, but when COVID first started, uh, the government issued a lot of low interest or interest forgivable loans to business owners in order to kind of keep them, keep them going and help them stay afloat. Now, at the time, this was a bipartisan, everybody agreed this was the right thing to do because so much of the country was shutting down and it didn't seem like it was. However, some of these businesses in the end didn't quite need the loans as much as we thought they would, but the money came anyway and then a lot of the debt was forgiven. And so a lot of money passed from the hands of the government to people, business owners, but also just consumers, employees, that sort of thing. And so a lot of people had a lot of money. So pair that with cheap debt and you have a situation where there's a lot of demand to borrow money to buy things, but at the same time, now we have a computer chip shortage and a logistics problem, and there's not a lot of things to buy. And that puts us in, basically, the situation that we are in right now. So, the question people are asking, is this a bubble? If you want a short answer, I would say, yes, this is a bubble in terms of car pricing, car values, the dealership situation as it sits right now. But, that, there's more nuance to it than that, and this is, in my opinion, this is not a bubble for all cars. Some cars are not in a bubble, and I'm gonna clarify what I mean here in a second. So, I wanna start with new cars. New cars. <laughs> 
<laughs> simply put, will not continue to sell like this. This will not be a continued long-term thing in the car business where even normal new cars are selling for the sticker price or marked up above the sticker price. If you worked, have worked in the car business for a long time, you know that. And dealerships, I think in part, are being pretty obstinate about pricing right now because they know this is a rare chance they have to get all the money for cars. In two years, they're gonna be back selling stuff under sticker and begging people to buy tire warranties. That's coming back, but right now, new cars are incredibly hot and that will not continue. Frankly, at dealerships near me, you are lucky if you can get a Ford Ranger at the sticker price. And that is an old truck that's about to be replaced, not incredibly desirable, but that's just the situation right now. However, supply will catch back up. The automakers are desperate to get the chip shortage thing solved. Governments and businesses are desperate to get the logistics issue solved and interest rates will go up and that will have an effect. People won't wanna borrow as much. Supply will equalize again and the new car bubble will burst. And yes, I am calling it a bubble. Now, in terms of bursting, I don't think it's gonna be like 09, but I do think as production starts to ramp up again, there will be a gradual slowdown in these crazy, crazy prices asked for new cars. And you'll start to see more cars on dealership lots. Um, but at the current moment, I'm telling everybody I know not to buy a car right now. This is the worst time you will get no deal. If you can avoid it, if you haven't just crashed something, don't buy a car right now. So yes, in that sense, in the new car sense, we are in a bubble. So let's talk about used cars. The new car bubble also kind of affects used cars because what happens when you can't find a new car at all because the dealership lots are empty or when you can't find a new car at a price you want because they're not dealing, you just start to look at used cars. And so because there are no new cars available right now, people are indeed starting to look at one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old used cars. Hey, why don't I just get into this? Except the problem is that demand is therefore really strong for those types of cars, and there's just not enough cars out there to meet the demand. There's this lull in new cars, which is forcing people to look at used cars more than would have before, and that is putting pressure on used car prices. Now, there's some ridiculous ones. My 2020 Land Rover Defender, which I bought 18 months ago and have put 26,000 miles on is now worth about what I paid for it. The window sticker price, even though it's been miled up and it's got scratches and whatever, it doesn't matter. You can't get a new one. And if you do, dealers want 15, 20, $25,000 over sticker. And so a used one at the sticker price is starting to seem like a pretty good deal, which is insane. But you can see how the new car bubble is putting pressure also on used car prices. It just sort of makes sense when new cars aren't available. But it is indeed a bubble because once the new car market, once the supply starts to catch up to the demand, demand diminishes maybe because interest rates go up or because people just bought cars and supply starts to increase because of the chip shortage problem being solved, logistics problem being solved. Once those things equalize, that'll take a lot of the pressure off the demand for used cars and then used car prices will also normalize. And so yes, this is a bubble, even in the used car sense, even though it doesn't really make sense you know, on its face for used cars to be affected, you can see how this sort of has a cascading effect from new cars down to used cars. And when two-year-old car prices go up, then five-year-old car prices go up, and eight-year-old, it just kind of is a cascading effect all trickling down the car stream. And I do think it's a bubble, and I do think that in however long it takes them to resolve the chip shortage and these other issues, I think that that's when prices are gonna start to normalize and come back down to a level that we may find more rational. But I said earlier that I don't think we are in a bubble for all cars. I think some cars cars are not in a bubble situation. The vast majority of cars are, but some aren't. And I'm specifically referring to special collector and enthusiast, very desirable, exotic, collectible types of cars. We have Porsche Carrera GTs with low mileage now selling between one and a half and $2 million. You have Ferrari F40s at a two and a half million dollar price point. Porsche 993 turbos. I was considering one of those a couple years ago at like 120, 130. They're now selling for 250 to 300. This car, I paid $225,000 for this car in 2018. It is now worth $350,000. These cars, I do not believe we are in a bubble. I think that this is a completely different situation of market forces, and I think that special cars like this are not in a bubble situation like new and just sort of generic used cars. I'm gonna explain why. One reason is inflation. We are in an inflationary period, more than we have been in a long time. And an inflationary period simply hits cars like this that are already starting at 200, 300, $500,000 harder. If there's 10% inflation, those cars are vastly on paper more 
expensive than they were before. And I think that that has played a role in these cars. But it's more than that. I think that wealthy people have an unusual amount of money right now for whatever reason it is. Um, the markets have been very strong over the last two years. And I think that some wealthy people either are seeing those gains and are maybe gonna pull out and try to put those gains in something they can drive or see or use, or they just wanna diversify their situation. They don't wanna have all this money in the market. Some people think the market is overvalued right now. And so what a better way to diversify than this cool asset that you can also drive. And right now you can still finance at a really, really low rate. So you can pull money out of the market and buy one of these. Whatever the reason, there is a large contingent of wealthy people who are searching for these special and desirable cars. And I think that that is totally different than the situation that's happening right now with new and used cars. And as a result, I don't think we're in a bubble with special cars like this. The simple truth is they made a finite number of the cars that I just mentioned. Ferrari F40s, Carrera GTs, Ford GTs, all these cars, and many, many, many special cars. E30 BMW M3s, I, I could name a bunch of cars that I wish I had bought three years ago. Um, but there's a small number of those and there's now more and more people with money than ever before and many of them are looking to pull their gains out, get something cool, diversify, or just take their money and have some fun. Uh, after a couple years of strong earning in some of these markets. Now, with that said, I wanna make one point very clear. I don't think that these cars will necessarily stay at these values forever and ever. I think in some senses, we are in a little bit of a bubble, even for collector car pricing, because we are also in a bubble for new and used car pricing. And that does, to an extent, put some pressure on the collector car market. I think there will inevitably be a pullback in special cars to some extent at some point, but I don't think it'll be as significant as the pullback we're gonna see for new and used cars. I think that those vehicles will go back to pretty much what we consider to be normal. There will be cars, you know, selling at sticker price or below in only another year. Used cars will go back to a rational, affordable depreciation curve. All of that stuff will make sense. But I really think that some of these special cars might now be sort of gone. You know, I, I really wanted an F40 or a Carrera GT, and I think those cars are no longer attainable for me. And I don't think they're gonna come back to a point. You know, everybody always like, well, when they come down again, I'm gonna buy one. I don't think it's happening. I think if you're looking for a Ford GT at $200,000, that opportunity has passed you by. And I think if you're looking for a Carrera GT at $700,000, that opportunity is gone. And I don't think that that opportunity will ever come back unless there is a significant additional recession. I think that there's just too much demand, too much interest, and frankly, too many people with money who have started to realize some of the collectability and, and desirability that goes along with these cars. And by the way, if you're thinking about cars as an investment, it's kind of a shame. I mean, I love to drive this car. I've got 38,000 miles on it now. It's an enormous number for one of these. Um, but a lot of people buying these cars are never going to do any of that stuff. They're never gonna use it or drive it. And a lot of times they don't even really know how. But if you look at Carrera GT pricing, that car was $400,000 when it was new. It got down to 250 in 09. And now it's at 2 million that's an incredible return on investment. And so a lot of these cars are just being snapped up by people who are gonna be using it as an investment vehicle, which, you know, that's, a, we could get into a whole other video on that topic, but it is happening. There's no question. And I think that will continue to drive this market higher and higher for special cars. So that's my view. Yes, we are in a bubble for new cars, but I think it will slow down. Same deal with regular used cars, but I do think that really special, collectible, enthusiast cars, are to an extent now sort of permanently altered in their marketplace and short of another major recession or some other renaissance where cars like this are built again to replace the ones that we now hold so special, I think that some of these cars are now kind of in a league of pricing that they're gonna be at um, and they won't be coming back down. But that's my thought. That is what I think of the current bubble dealer markup car industry situation on Doug Deep Neuro.